Hello there. I guess this is what happens when all the audio gets corrupted. <sighs> Let's do this again. Morbius 2 will be named Morbius 2 Colors of Blood, not Morbius 2, it's Morbid Time, because I like Colors of Blood better, and Blade is the villain, okay? Okay. I get that you're here for the story, so here it is. I wanted to make that one girl from the Morbius ending scene, and I wanted to have her be the mother of Blade somehow, and there was going to be a time jump. So, so after the girl wakes up with the red eyes in the Morbius movie... Uh, I want it to, like, cut to a future 15 years. And then we're going to get the scene of young Blade. And he's, like, going on his first vampire hunt after learning everything. First hunt, first kill, first blood. But, of course, Morbius isn't going to go after a 15-year-old Blade. Right? So we're going to have to... So, like, that's just going to be 15 years from that, but then it's going to be another five years or something. Yeah, another five years or something, that would make him at least 20. So at least he's an adult by that time, so I guess it would be more make more sense. During the sequence of Blade's first vampire kill, he gets bitten by a vampire, but then doesn't turn. And because Blade doesn't turn immediately or right away, he asks Whistler. He asks Whistler about his heritage and what he really is, because as of this point in the movie, he thinks he's just a normal human, just slaying vampires left and right. We then later find out that Blade is a Dampier, which is a half-human, half-vampire hybrid. In the original Blade movies. A Dampier is someone who has, or someone like Blade would have the best of both worlds. So like the the best traits of vampires and the good traits of humans also. Blade finally learns who he is or what he is, and then decides to take matters into his own hands and starts training. Training to be... The, the one true vampire terminator. And from ages 15 to 20 in that five year gap, that is where he'll be training to perfect his vampire abilities and trying to perfect everything. We then get a montage of Blade slashing and slicing and butchering vampire heads until he stabs a blade into a vampire head and then it's gonna, in a smooth transition, it's gonna cut to modern, like, modern-day New York, where we see Morbius. So, obviously, it's 20 years into the future, and Morbius has officially got a bigger hold and knows all of his abilities and everything now, so we have a way more experienced Morbius. So, we first see Morbius at Milo's grave, paying his respects, because why not? Because it is going to be 20 years into the future, so we will need a way to, for him to acknowledge the things from the first movie, even though it did happen a long time ago, and they were childhood best friends. So obviously we're going to need a moment like that, so we might as well just put it in here right now. The audio you just heard for the story so far, that was the only salvageable audio pieces that I, I, that I could get left. That's pretty much what I had so far. I haven't had anything like the first 10 or 11 minutes into the other one. I couldn't get that back, sadly. Back to the story at hand now. So Morbius pays respects to Milo. But then as he's on his way out, he notices a figure wearing a, a blue and red sweatshirt. That is reminiscent of Spider-Man No Way Home's cemetery scene. Now I'm thinking this person could either be a Spider-Man or someone else. But if it is Spider-Man, then I definitely want it to be Miles Morales Spider-Man. Now I don't know if I want to make this weird or anything. And by that, I mean, I kind of want Miles Morales, because he is the second Spider-Man. 
So, would it make sense if he was paying his respects to Peter Parker? Like, but I feel like that would be weird. Because as of this point, there's no Spider-Man in the, in the Sony universe, right? But there is in the MCU, which Blade is going to be in. But I don't think, I don't think they're going to allow Morbius to be in the MCU. Unless they do, like, another multiverse thing, which is what they've been doing recently in the movies. Also, I, I just remembered that nobody knows Peter Parker is Spider-Man at this point as of No Way Home. So that would be weird if... Maybe it's a thing that only Miles knows. Because... Well, I mean, Tom Holland's Spider-Man isn't dead. But, I mean, his Spider-Man is still alive. But the, no one knows that he's... Spider-Man, if that makes sense. I mean, maybe something happens. Maybe Peter meets people. Peter Parker Spider-Man. Maybe he meets people get his name back out as Spider-Man instead of keeping everything in identity. Maybe MJ knows and they're together. Maybe maybe P maybe Tom Holland and Peter Parker meets a Gwen Stacy or a Black Cat or something. Like that could, that can happen. Definitely can. And that would that would make some people know of Peter Parker's Spider-Man identity. So I guess that can clear some things up. But which Spider-Man would I want to do? Would I make it Tom Holland Spider-Man? Or would I make it Andrew Garfield Spider-Man? Like, like, there's a choice between the two. We still need a third Amazing Spider-Man movie because cause he, Andrew was robbed. Like, low-key? I'm, I'm not capping. He was robbed of the third movie. And plus, he, plus his two movies, they, he was great. But, like, Deserve better writing in everything, to be honest. So back to the story, Miles Morales recognizes Morbius because he's now a, a hero, like, like Venom is, I guess, and with the Sinister Six, which is, I think, what they're doing. They're, they're not really Sinister Six, because, like, they're heroes or something now. I don't know what a better term for it is. The Sappy Six. <laughs> That's so stupid. Miles Morales decides to tell Morbius that there are, there are these creatures of the night or vampires that decide to come after his uncle, the Prowler. And just for the sake of it, let's just say that Miles Morales doesn't know that his uncle is the Prowler. Let, let's just keep it a secret for now, okay? Let's do that. Morbius then responds, how do you know it's vampires? Morbius's voice is literally just Jared Leto voice. Jared, the, Jared it, his voice is Jared Leto. <laughs> Jared Leto has the same voice as Morbius. And because they're literally, it's literally his voice, I'm, I'm not going to do a, a voice, I'm sorry. Miles then decides to tell Morbius that he knows that they're vampires or creatures of the night because they only hunt him at night. That's self-explanatory. Miles Morales decides to tell Morbius of his father's location and tries to get, get to him to save him from the other vampires before Blake gets there and his his vampire kills cuz they're they're killing the same the same vampires which is which is weird for Morbius cuz he's committing genocide so well i mean technically it's rogue vampires but still they're they're gone rogue right as Morbius decides to leave he does a running leap into the fly, but right, at, right as he's about to leave the ground, he says the line, It's Morbin time. So because of Morbius' flying ability, he can, he can fly in the air and through the wind currents and go up to speeds of at least 35 miles per hour, as it says. So obviously he's going to get there before Blade. 
but Blade's gonna get there last minute in the apartment, which which where Prowler and Miles live. Morbius then realizes and tells Miles that he can't go to the police because of reasons and that he's tried to, but they won't hear him out because he believes in vampires in New York. That's nonsense. When when stuff like Morbius exists and Venom and these like aliens <laughs> like Thanos and wizards like Doctor Strange, like they all exist. So why can't vampires, right? And because this is a way more experienced Morbius, we're gonna get the chance to see Morbius mind control some novice vampires. Which I think it's gonna be cool. So he's gonna like burn them. Like, cause it's, it's daylight out and Morbius is one of the only vampires who could survive daylight, right? And since they're novice vampires and like born vamps, I'm, I'm gonna call them vamps because vampires that's a big word uh so since he can like mind control them because he is more experienced and they can do that uh he's gonna like tell them to stop or he's gonna push them over the balcony and it's daylight so they're just gonna start burning until they stop and then then we're gonna have blade arrive on the scene okay he's gonna throw a knife at one of the vampires heads and then Morbius looks surprised because he doesn't know that Blade exists. He knew there was a legendary vampire hunter, vamp hunter, but he didn't know what they looked like or anything about them. And I guess this is the first time they're meeting. So this is going to be cool. And then, then I think it would be awesome if we got a fight scene between Morbius and Blade. But then, Blade has been training for practically his whole life. He was learning and fighting for like his whole life. And he's around 20 something in this movie. So, and, and, and Morbius and him get into a fight. But then the normal tactics that Blade uses, it doesn't work on Morbius because he is half human also. He is a vampire, vampire, my bad. Well, I mean, not technically a Dampier, but, I mean, Morbius injected himself with vampire bat DNA, which I guess makes him half, but, I don't know, it's still a very weird and fuzzy subject to touch on, because he did have, like, a blood disease, and he tried to get fixed, but turned himself into a vampire, but without the negative side effects of, uh sunlight burning or st or stakes that like would kill you or the sign of the cross or like me seeing his reflection mirror that stuff that doesn't apply to morbius so it turns out that morbius is actually a biochemist turned blood sucker because i'm guessing that's the official term here and morbius is not a damp here like i thought he was so that so that clears things up quite a bit so in the fight, Blade finds out that the weapons and everything he's been taught, it doesn't work against Morbius. Because of Morbius' speed and the fact that it's enhanced means he's so much faster than Blade in every way. But Blade can counter that since he's been up with, he's been in, in fights and stuff with vampires before and knows how to deal with them. But Morbius... I want to make him faster and like more cunning like punishing him for his mistakes like you would in a fighting game like Mortal Kombat or something. Morbius gets the upper hand in the fight and decides to throw Blade across the room Then, after doing that he morbs and flies off into the sunset but Blade being as smart as he is planted a tracker on Morbius so he can find him and then we get a chase scene with both of them even though they're farther apart and blade tracks him down to to morbius his lab so now we're back at michael morbius's lab and at his lab he has this this bat container and they need to feed so morbius brings out this packet of blue blood 
basically, which which helps helps them both recover and like heal its blood. It's basically a health buff for Morbius, right? Morbius feeds, gets a health buff, etc. So Blade's reminiscing about the fight because it just happened like an hour or two earlier. And though Morbius hasn't noticed the tracker that Blade put on him, he's gonna Blade's gonna wanna fight back and make a special weapon. A cutlass. I've gone through some names for the cutlass. And the movie is called Cutlass of Blood. But the name of the Cutlass, it's going to be the Cutlass of Strange. Because that, that's the name that's been sticking with me throughout this whole video process. And I can't really think of anything better than that. And I don't think, I don't think there's any, like, resemblance to Morbius make, or Morbius. I don't think there's a, there's a reference to anything like that. Like, Blaine making an enhanced vampire killer weapon. So I guess this is the first that I know of anyways. I, I, I'll need to do research, I don't know. Now we gotta keep in mind that Blade doesn't know the weaknesses of Morbius and he's just testing out better vampire killer weapons in hopes it works. Like making blades sharper and like filling them with like silver or something, you know? Just like perfecting with the killer weapons. We get a sick montage of Blade trying out the weapons with his group, right? I feel like that would be pretty cool if done right. Well, Morbius did get interrupted in the fight because he was he was about to tell vampires who their leader was, but he got cut off from Blade. So I guess that happened. Now Morbius has to has to help Miles Morales find more vampires who are after the Prowler, or Miles's uncle. Through the sonar waves that Morbius has, he finds out that the two vampires are communicating and planning to take out the Prowler at 6 p.m. the following day. You might be asking why it's 6 p.m., why not later? Uh, because 6 p.m. was the first thing I can come up with for A. And for B, because the sun is going down and they still have to, they still have more time as the night progresses later on. Morbius decides to meditate with the bats to help focus on his sonar and get a clear view of of everything that the, the vampires might be plotting against Prowler. Now we gotta keep in mind that Morbius, though he does have the sonar powers, he isn't a full vampire he only injected himself with the with the blood of a vampire bat so of course he doesn't have all the traits that vampires have in the marvel universe and because he doesn't have all the powers he can't get the connection to who the vampires are talking to their leader so i looked up vampire leaders in the marvel universe and i'm gonna go with varney I think that's how their name is pronounced. We haven't heard from Miles Morales in a while, I guess. So we're, we're going to have him just chilling in the lab with Morbius as he's meditating in the, in the bat, bat house, as I'm going to say. Morbius exits the bat house and asks Miles on um, how he knew they were vampires and why they went after his uncle. Miles then proceeds to tell Morius that his uncle made a deal with the devil. The deal basically being a get out of jail free card, no questions asked. But he has vampires hunting him down because it only lasts for say 10, 11 years. Let's go out on a limb here and say 12 years. I feel like that's a good concrete number. Right? 12 years? Yeah. The deal with the devil was set between Prowler and Farney. Prowler's time is up. Morbius overhears the vampires through the sonar with the bats, because that basically amplifies it, as I've said. Basically hears them talking to their leader, Varney, 
and the name drops for Varney, and now he knows who he's after. The original, the true original vampire of the Marvel Universe. Now up to this point, we all thought that Morbius was the original vampire starting everything, but I guess he wasn't, but he, Morbius is the first biochemist turned bloodsucker. Basically, Morbius chilling in the back cage with the bats is like the Flash in the Speed Force just chilling there in seasons three going on to four. Like, it's just like a super chill. I'm gonna shut up now. The voices that Morbius is hearing, however, is fading in and out, but over time, as he keeps doing it, it's becoming more and more clear about what they're saying, and as far as the range is, it's far. Morbius decides to prep up and gets in a new suit, which looks epic, by the way. As Morbius morbs and flies out of the scene, his body's gonna move out of the frame, and then we're gonna cut to Blade, who is testing weapons and training like he does rigorously, and Whistler comes up to him and saying like, isn't that enough? Are you sure this is the one we've been hunting down? Because they've been hunting a, a vampire mastermind for the past, like, two years or something and they think they finally got a good lead and thinking it, that it's Morbius but in reality it's that one vampire leader I forgot their name Blade actually thinks he's ready and after testing it on a couple vampires that they ha that they hold hostage to test weapons and stuff the weapons do work and is gonna try it, Blade's gonna try it on Morbius. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking that somehow the tracker isn't gonna be on Morbius because he changed fits and whatever, but keep in mind, it, it was, it's using Microtech, so it's, it's still there. It's still planted on Morbius, he just doesn't know it. Now, as Morbius is flying, he notices that he has this sort of stiff back, or there's something that's keeping him from going at his top limit in flying speed. And then he realizes that there's that the pain wasn't there before his encounter with Blade, so he thinks Blade did something. But Morbius is all healed because of the, the blue blood that Morbius invented. So, now... He's thinking that Blade tempered with him and decides to take the tracker off mid-flight and chucks it into the lake or ocean, river, body of water, whatever he's flying above, I don't know. Blade takes notice that the tracker is now inactive and has been for at least 30 minutes. Blade now has no other way to get to Morbius's location. So now they're gonna have to use old fashioned ways and hunt at night for like rumors and see if people seeing things, talking, etc. Stuff like that. Blade is now patrolling the streets, trying to get info out of people and seeing things. He's on this this motorcycle or something, a bike, and he notices there's something in the air, so he decides to follow it. It is Morbius. And it leads him right to the location of the two vampires who are trying to to get Prowler. Blade once again decides to track down the vampires and Morbius in the same place, not realizing that Morbius is trying to help the situation. Another fight ensues between Blade and Morbius, but this time, Blade, because he has his perfected weapons, he gets the upper hand and slashes Morbius's face and now there's blood dripping off it because this movie is rated R like I said earlier I don't know if I said that earlier but it is rated R now right before Blade is about to take out Morbius and decapitates him Miles steps into the scene 
and says, what are you doing? He's, he's trying to help with the vampire situation. Why are you killing him? What Blade then makes the realization that they're more alike than they both care to admit. Now, I want to say that they do settle their differences because in Blade 2, spoilers by the way, <laughs> I feel like it's a really old movie. Spoilers. Uh, Blade decides to work with other vampires in that movie to help take down a bigger threat, a new species. Right as, right as Blade is about to give Morbius' hand off the ground to get up, he's going to help him get up, and then Blade, through his other hand, decides to use a knife and slash his his hand clean off. Miles Morales then cries out and hitting Blade. He's like, no, why would you do that? Ah. And then Blade responds with this badass line. The badass line is, I, I really want it to be a callback to the first Blade movie where he goes, motherfucker, you out of your damn mind. The, fuck are you out of your damn the two vampires in the back, because they were interrupted by Blade yet again, they decide to make a clean getaway. A clean getaway when no one is looking, I should say. So I really want the vampires to leave, like the background vampires. I want them to leave right as they hear the sound of his hand cut off, like... <laughs> when, when they hear that sound, I hope that sounds good by the way. As I want them to turn around when they hear that sound and just in horror <laughs> and then just look forward all like scared and shit and just fly at their fastest speed out of there so the prowler finally speaks and walks through the door and tells tells them both about the deal he made the the get out of jail free card so now at this point blade and morbius are expected to work with each other to defeat the big vampire, the OG vampire. Blade doesn't want to work with Morbius at first, but then he realizes that he's gonna kill like the mother of all vampires or something along those lines. After reconsidering, Blade reaches out his hand with, without the weapon and he goes in for a handshake and asks Morbius to team up and be like friends or whatever until this is all over and morbius is sitting there disgusted like he didn't just cut off his hand like a whole couple minutes ago like a minute ago i mean i would find it very cool if morbius got like an ash versus evil dead hand glove thing that ash has i feel like that would be awesome it's like to give morbius Morbius then comes to the realization that Blade has enhanced weapons and can kill Morbius at any time and sliced off his hand very quickly, so he decides to team up. Morbius tells Blade about Varney and how they're the original vampire, Ground Zero. Blade wants to hunt down this vampire also. I seriously need to stop taking breaks from working on this project or else it's never gonna come out ever. So last I left off, Morbius got his his hand cut out and and now they're suddenly teaming up. Is is that right? In agreements, both Blade and Morbius decide to work together to hunt down Varney, the original vampire. Now the main question that I have is how do they hunt down Varney? right and i have an answer for that dr strange i do want to say that there are going to be minor spoilers for dr strange in the multiverse of madness in this movie so and it, it just came out on disney plus like a couple weeks ago so i do recommend that you watch that movie if you haven't seen it just yet to reveal Doctor Strange, what I want to do is I want the screen to just fade to black, okay? 
And now I know what you're thinking, but I have this really cool idea that if it if the movie just fades to black, it's gonna start like rolling the credits, and then it's just gonna stop, reverse it, and then we're just gonna it's just gonna be plain black again. But the next time we see it, it's it's gonna be Doctor Strange's third eye just open. And that's how we get the introduction to Doctor Strange. But when the the thing is, when the eye opens, I want it to be the point of view of the third eye. So it turns out that his third eye has a name, and it's actually the Eye of Agamotto. It says here that the Eye of Agamotto can see the true intentions of people. And I find that really cool, because that does, like, nothing for Doctor Strange. So Steven and the Eye... They, they know that Morbius and Blade are at the door of the Sanctum Sanctorum. So now he knows that he's going to have to help to find Farnay, the original vampire. It says that the power to create vampires is in the Book of Vishanti. Doctor Strange does a locate vampire spell, but then he realizes that his spell works for Morbius and Blade because they're both half vampire. As I may or may not have said before, Morbius has a vampire bat DNA in his DNA as well. So he's technically a half vampire, but then Blade on the other hand is is born half vampire. So I I don't know how that affects the spells <laughs> that Doctor Strange is gonna do. And now Blade and Morbius have to tell Doctor Strange that they're vampires, and that's what's screwing up the spell that he's trying to do to locate Varney. Doctor Strange then comes to his senses and realizes that he needs to put a vampire locating cloaking spell on Blade and Morbius. Because they are known, and he doesn't want his spell to track them because they aren't true vampires. Basically, what that spell did was it made the it was a vampire locating cloaking spell I hope I said that in the right order because I don't know I don't know if it matters but for this story it does so what what the spell did basically was vampires they can like sense each other I guess and since Morbius is like half vampire and Blade is technically half vampire also, they can't be sensed by other vampires because of the spell that Doctor Strange just did. So with that spell, that protection spell up, Doctor Strange decides to locate Varney. Or he he looks for the biggest vampire energy source that isn't there in the room with him. The spell does inevitably work, and Varney is located in a place in Rhode Island. Little do they know, though, that Blade has been to that base in Rhode Island before. And though Blade was there, he didn't know who was interrogating and torturing him there. But it was Varney. Now, once that Blade learns of the location of Varney, he decides to tell his team on where he's going and and update him on all that's happening. That and the fact that he's now working with the, the famous Morbius. And because both of them are teaming up, both Blade and Morbius, they need blood to drink. So they decide to take a car ride instead because they'd be using their powers if they, they've started like flying and such, right? Family road trip. Doctor Strange wasn't really that important to me in the story. He's just there to give them a locator spell pretty much. No, I don't want Doctor Strange to be in the car ride with them, but he is going to be keeping an eye on them through the eye of Agamotto and seeing everything that goes down. Blade and Morbius are also just doing a car ride because they need to get along, and plus Blade can't fly like Morbius can. During the car ride, Blade confesses that he's killed over 40 plus vampires. 
Blade also goes into like a mental crisis situation thing because he doesn't know if he's going to heaven or hell. Because on the offhand, he's saving the world from vampires, but now so many people, so many vampires probably want him dead because he killed family members of people that probably are vampires and everything. And people probably hate him for that, I'm guessing. And now he doesn't know what's going to happen later on in life. Morbius decides to tell Blade after the confession that he says that he can keep killing, Blade can keep killing his kind for vampires, and it's not technically born as one, so he doesn't really care as much, I guess. See, but the thing is, I don't know if that's out of character for Morbius, because there was only one movie they didn't really explore if he cared about vampires that much, and like vampirism and all that, so I don't know. So Blade and Morbius, they finally arrive to the base in, in Rhode Island. As Blade and Morbius do walk in, Blade remembers vividly the torture scene that happened. And we're going to have a flashback of that. So this flashback, it's going to consist of Blade getting tortured by Varney himself, right? And, and also getting threatened that he's gonna, Varney himself is gonna raise Dracula from the dead. But then Blade all of a sudden gets saved by the Night Stalkers. I basically just want whatever is said in, in there, I just want that translated into live action somehow. I know it says that the place exploded, but let's just say that it got rebuilt. Yeah. And because Blade has been there before, he knows all the paths and all the doorways and everything that and how the building is made and everything blade finds out that the shortcuts are all still there from the original building from before it exploded so blade uses it and finds varney's throne room and now because this video is pretty much 40 minutes long i'm just gonna sum up the rest of it or I could go into a detailed explanation of what I want to happen, but I've been doing this for this whole thing, and it could be longer than two hours if I go into detail with every scene I choose. <sighs> so Blade does get caught by Varney. Blade ultimately gets his ass kicked the first time, and Blade does get a couple hits in with his enhanced weaponry. Doctor Strange is keeping an eye on things from afar. And he notices that things are going wrong. So he decides to teleport in and throws an oblivion spell at Varney and he decides to flee the battle for now. Sorry, it's incantation of oblivion spell. My bad. So Varney ultimately flees the battle and that's when he decides to start making uh, an army of vampires. In this so-called army of vampires, they are enhanced vampires basically. So, so yeah, Blade and Morbius, they have to work together to defeat this enhanced vampire army in order to get to Varney in his throne room. Varney flees the fight, and then Morbius, Blade, and Doctor Strange, they decide to regroup and think of what to do in order to track down Varney and stop him from creating this army. Doctor Strange decides to cast a locating spell to find Varno, but he's nowhere to be seen by Strange or any magic beings. We then do a quick cut to Varney, who is in an alternate dimension, or in an, another Earth, or something. I don't know where he'd be hidden, but in an alternate Earth or something. Sure, let's go with that, yeah. Okay. So, in this alternate dimension, Varney is going to be attempting to raise Dracula from the dead. But he needs the army because he needs, like, a certain amount of blood spilled in order to raise Dracula. So, he's going to do that and try to raise Dracula. But then we need the heroes, Blade, Morbius, and Strange, Doctor Strange, to defeat Dracula before he's risen. 
and to defeat Dracula, our heroes, they need to find a way to stop the army from becoming a thing so we can raise Dracula and bring him into the world. And as it says online, it says that uh, Dracula's weaknesses are basically just sunlight. So it's supposed to be that. So now I need to make the heroes Strange, Morbius, and Blade. They need to come up with a way to use the sunlight against Dracula and win the battle. But the thing about that is Blade and Morbius are half vampires, so they're not immune or no 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 wait wait wait. You know, they are immune to daylight or sunlight. But Dracula isn't. So So that already gives them part of a tactical advantage if you really think about it. But I don't know if Blade and Morbius know that he's like I want to say allergic, but, like, it's more more of a weakness, not an allergic reaction to seeing sunlight, because, like, his skin burns from being a vampire in sunlight, like most vampire stories go. I, I don't know. Doctor Strange soon realizes that something is wrong, and he decides to investigate. So then we cut to Strange. And he decides to unlift a protection spell from the base, revealing what what Varney's lair really is. While unlifting the protection spell around Varney's base of operations, Strange notices a secret passageway which leads into the sewers. So everybody, Blade, Morbius, and Strange, they, they decide to go walking into the sewer and and as they go walking they hear voices in the distance and in the distance they hear a sort of chanting so they try to go towards it but they they find nothing but a wall but on the other side of the wall they can clearly hear voices i should also mention that the sewer system is like old and abandoned and has like murky water and it's just a rough place and there's also like rubble around it so a strange decides to lift the rubble carefully without letting the whole place collapse right so then he, strange lifts the rubble dr strange he lifts up the rubble and then he goes into a room a sealed hidden room where there's like four or five people who are worshipping Mephisto. I think I said it in like near the beginning of the video, but this, this movie does take place in the future, like far future. So Doctor Strange and Mephisto, they have fought before, like countless times. And because this movie does take place in the future and we have not seen it in the MCU, I want there to be a montage of how many times Strange has defeated Mephisto, or Mephisto's won, or there, there are many, many battles that they've gone up against each other, because they do fight on the rig. That feels weird, like, like them just, like the devil and Doctor Strange just fighting on the regular, like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense, I know. But like maybe they they've had a run in like I don't know how many times let's let's say like six times something like that just like a quick montage so like that's gonna that's gonna be that montage that's gonna take a couple minutes of the movie sure yeah and then he's gonna explain it to the people to stop worshiping Mephisto because they will and they they will yeah. They will be going to hell if they don't stop, or if they stop, don't stop, we're, we're shipping, I can't speak. The people who are worshipping Mephisto will go to hell if they don't stop worshipping Mephisto. Did I say that right? Now I know Mephisto is like, weird. Weird. I, <laughs> sorry, excuse me. Um... 
I don't know who I'd cast as Mephisto. Like, to be honest, like, I have no idea, like, who would be a good Mephisto casting? Like, because I got nobody. So if we are going to do a flashback, we're going to have to, like, choose someone to play Mephisto. And I don't, I don't know people who could play. I mean, I guess if Tom Ellis wanted to be Mephisto in the MCU, I'd be down for that. I definitely would be. But, like... Well, I mean, technically, Tom Ellis' Lucifer, that was, was kind of set in the DC universe, not really the Marvel universe. So maybe they'll get someone... I mean, Mephisto and Lucifer are two very different characters. So I don't know why I'm suggesting them in the first place. So yeah, casting uh, Mephisto, that might be a hard one. Like, I, I have no idea who I'd cast. I'll probably have to look for, uh, actors. Like, I feel like Mephisto has to be British. You know? But, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's just because I'm used to Tom Ellis as Lucifer. I, uh, I'm gonna shut up now. We did just reach, like, the 45 or 46 minute mark. This is getting kind of lengthy, and I'm nowhere near being done with this story. So I might have to split this into two parts. I'm not too sure. Uh, or I could shorten the story. Or I could stop talking like I am right now and just say the rest of it. Just be like, yeah, this happens, and which leads to this. Then that event leads to that event. Movie over. Roll credits. Yada, yada, yada. You know? You know? Uh... Yeah, I, uh, should I do two parts? Thinking about it. Yeah, because, like, this first, this is taking me, like, months to record. Anyways, um, this is getting pretty lengthy, like I said, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this into two parts. No idea when part two will come out, but there will be a video explaining when part two will come out, or maybe I'll make a community post. I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm sorry that this part one took so long to make. But hopefully it's good and up to everyone's standards. And not a trash story. Because I'm not a writer. <laughs> okay, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to end it here, because this is pretty long, as she said. Um...